A very warm welcome to the video, guys. Today, we're going to be looking at a very quick clip from Bob Babbitt's interview with Gustav Eden, which only just released this morning or today, a few hours ago, and essentially looking at why his or how he's taken so long or found it's the recovery from the Ironman World Championships so difficult. And then we're going to dive into two studies, one looking at the physical recovery demands from an Ironman triathlon and the mental recovery demands. So we have the peripheral, physical, central, which is our central nervous system, mental demands and why it's so important for professional athletes, but even more so or just as important for age group athletes. So stay tuned, um, stick with it, and we're going to dive in some really interesting information regarding how long particularly it takes to recover and what you should expect in the days and weeks after an Ironman triathlon. So first up, the clip with uh, Bob Babbitt. And so it's not like your season is even over after this weekend. Now you start the Olympic push. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Bermuda in uh, a bit over a week, the yeah. weekend after St. George, and then we have Abu Dhabi three weeks later. So it's uh, still a long way to go. And uh, after Kona, I thought, yeah, three weeks to St. George, that's a lot of time. I would manage to put in some good training session and be specific. And then suddenly two weeks is gone and it's one week to race day and I haven't really done any single specific session. So time really flies yes. and yeah, I realized that uh, the schedule is slightly more packed than I thought it would be because yeah, three weeks, it's, yeah, it, I feel like that should be a lot of time, but not, time, time flies. Well, not time for that flies. type of effort. Yeah. The type of, you put in a, that is a world, have, like I said, having to run 236 is different than running a 236 when you've got a five minute lead off the run and yeah. you're off the bike and you're just running on your own. That was, that was a lot of pressure to catch that guy. Yeah, so uh, it takes some time to recover. It was only my second full listen, so I didn't really know how much time. Yes. And uh, been like slightly sick after the race as well. So yeah, time flies, really. Alrighty, so you've just watched the interview with uh, Bob Babbitt and Gustav Eden talking about how he's really struggled to recover from the Ironman World Championships and winning that event in terms of being able to actually put in any hard training sessions and also with his immune system function he's got a little bit sick afterwards been quite fatigued hasn't been able to do much apart from active recovery now what i want to do is dive into two studies one looking at the impact of the how long it takes physically to recover from an ironman triathlon this is so important for age groupers and professionals but anyone in the likes particularly age groupers because they don't necessarily have the capacity that you know to fully recover they do an ironman triathlon have to go back to work the day after or few days after and it's like your capacity for recovery is impaired and this is why this is so important so first study physical recovery next study is going to be looking at the mental component which is just as if not even more important so we're going to dive into this one first this was from the um journal the european journal of applied physiology 2008 study it's a little bit older now but essentially what it was looking at was recovery after an Ironman triathlon sustained inflammatory response and muscular stress. So we have a read through the abstract. We'll dive into the important um, results and the key takeaways. So ultra endurance exercise, such as an Ironman triathlon induces muscle damage and a systemic inflammatory response as the Resolution of recovery in these parameters is poorly documented. We investigated indices of muscle damage uh, and systemic inflammation in response to an Ironman triathlon and monitored these parameters 19 days into recovery. Blood was sampled from 42 well-trained male triathletes two days before, immediately after, and one, five, and 19 days after an Ironman triathlon. Blood samples were analyzed for hematological profile and plasma values of um, myeloperoxidase, MPO, polymorphin nuclear, PNN, elastase. So these two things are uh, enzymes released from white blood cells, our immune system um, essentially measures of the immune activity from those white blood cells. Um, cortisol, testosterone, both important hormones in recovery, stress, cortisol predominantly, repair and recovery, testosterone mainly from a gross like overall physiological standpoint. Creatine kinase activity, myoglobin, both of these measures of muscular damage interleukin, IL-6, IL-10, and high-sensitivity C-reactive protein measures of inflammation. So particularly high-sensitivity C-reactive protein, a measure of overall systemic, how much inflammation is your body under or experiencing on an overall level right now. So immediately post-race, there, there were significant increases in total leukocyte count, MPO, PNN elastase, cortisol, creatine kinase activity, myoglobin, these interleukins, and 
high sensitivity to reactive protein, while testosterone significantly decreased compared to pre-race. With the exception of cortisol, which decreased below pre-race values, these alterations persisted one day post-race, five days post-race, creatine kinase activity, myoglobin, interleukins, and uh, CRP had decreased, but were still significantly, um, significantly elevated. 19 days post-race, most parameters had returned to pre-race values, except uh, for MPO and PNN elastase. This is immune activity, which had both significantly decreased below pre-race concentrations, and myoglobin and Huston sensitivity C-reactive protein were slightly, but significantly elevated or higher than pre-race. So this is our overall systemic inflammation, still higher than before the race, 19 days later. So let's have a look at the... Um, you know, I'll link both studies in the uh, comment um, description of the video so you guys can have a look and really go through the methods, et cetera, if you really want to. But essentially what's important here, you know, we look at immune activity. We also look at these main hormones, cortisol and testosterone. So pre-race, um, 282 nanomoles per liter, testosterone, 11.4 nanomoles per liter. Even overall from an average testosterone perspective, that's not that high, but this is quite in common, is quite common for endurance athletes who do put a lot of stress on their body to have lower levels of testosterone than average um, because of that, you know, effective endurance training, which really does lead to a lower testosterone state. Um, let me just plug this in here. So, uh, but what we saw essentially, what's really important was that testosterone levels halved post-race um, and even one day after the race, they were like literally cut in half uh, five days after they recovered. And of course, 19 days after they were, they were recovered. So, uh, we dive down here and we look at C-reactive protein, which is, I think is a key takeaway from this overall systemic inflammation in the body. How much is the body dealing with? Remember that systemic inflammation can cause fatigue. It can cause reduced performance outcomes, can cause, you know, brain fog, all this kind of stuff. So two days pre still elevated only slightly, but it was a significant elevation when done from st statistical analysis. So 19 days, almost three weeks after and we don't we didn't get a measure as to how long this takes to actually come back down so the key takeaways i'm going to jump down to the conclusion here is that um the most important finding of the current study was that although the marked initial inflammatory response induced by ironman triathlon subsided rapidly a low-grade systemic inflammatory response was sustained for at least five days of recovery the prolonged moderate but significant elevation of il6 and crp might be associated with inflammatory processes and or impaired glycogen replenishment within damaged muscles. Uh, this highlights the importance of, you know, getting those, uh, getting glycogen, muscle glycogen, liver glycogen uh, replenished in the recovery period. So obviously getting those carbohydrates in as soon as you can within reason. Um, athletes may be more susceptible to infections due to this attenuated immune uh, competence within the first period of recovery after demanding endurance exercise. So this is very consistent with what Gustav was experiencing. You know, he got sick after the race. Obviously, the immune system is stressed and it's therefore suppressed in the time period after an event. Very important. Furthermore, inadequate rest following prolonged intensive exercise might cause a chronic systemic inflammatory state that in turn leads to a syndrome of impaired performance and progressive failure. So, so important for athletes to realize that Recovering from an, a big event like this is vital before you start to push the body again. Otherwise, you can really just be like chasing your tail in terms of not allowing your body to recover uh, or allowing it inadequate recovery and then stressing it. And you really never get back to full, you know, full potential and performance. And, and you just kind of suffer this chronic fatigue because you're always in this, you know, progressive or, you know, long-term state of fatigue uh, and inflammation. So, however, due to the continuous demands of Ironman competition on training schedules, competitive athletes might, might not have sufficient recovery between the races. Thus, finding an, an appropriate balance between training, competition, and recovery is an essential challenge to maintain a high level of performance and to minimize potential health consequences. Key takeaway there, very important. From the perspective of the observed muscle uh, repair and inflammatory process, at least two to three weeks of active recovery is advisable before gradually returning to more intensive training. This is so, so consistent with what Gustav is, you know, kind of explaining in this video. He really couldn't push himself as much as he wanted to in order to prepare for this race coming up, the Ironman 70.3 World Champs. He could only really, really do active recovery stuff. Um, 
But what does it highlight? It highlights the importance of allowing adequate time to recover. Is his race at the Ironman 17.3 World Champs compromised in because he did Kona three weeks ago? Same for Christoph, Christoph Blumenfeld and same for many other athletes as well. Potentially, doesn't mean he won't go out and have a great performance. No, but I think it can go either way. You know, you can still be really fatigued and you may suffer and have a bad performance or you could just be coming into like you know complete recovery and have a really good performance so it can go either way i think for gustav i think he's still gonna have a great race so, same with bloomfield these guys are extraordinary in what they do but this highlights the importance of allowing weeks to recover and getting completely over the um, damage you've done to your body in an ironman before getting back to it so that's the physical or what's called like the peripheral, the body response. Now let's have a look at what's called central fatigue, which is our brain and um, the mind and the neurons and how that can be significantly uh, implicated in terms of the overall, you know, your subjective experience of fatigue, et cetera, and why that's so important too. And what, and it's something that's not often discussed. So we'll dive into that now. Alrighty guys, so here is the study that I was referring to, which is really looking at the effect on the brain and the central nervous system in terms of recovering from exercise, fatigue, our perception of, you know, how well we've recovery, re recovery, <laughs> recovered, geez, et cetera. So this was, this was a um, 2015 study from Frontiers in Physiology. Is it time to turn our attention towards central mechanisms for post-exertional recovery strategies and performance? Really, like, in essence, this was calling for more research on the topic. It wasn't necessarily a definitive study, but it was really interesting. And I'll link it if you guys want to, again, check it out yourself and read through more thoroughly. But the key points to take away were the review of the literature highlights. Central fatigue is accepted as a contributor to overall athletic performance, yet little research directly investigates post-exercise recovery strategies targeting the brain. Current post-exercise recovery strategies likely impact on the brain through a range of mechanisms, but improvements to these strategies is needed. Research is required to optimize post-exercise recovery with a focus on the brain. So the abstract. Post-exercise recovery has largely focused on peripheral mechanisms of fatigue, but there's growing acceptance that fatigue is also contributed to through central mechanisms which demand the attention, which demand that attention should be uh, paid to optimize the recovery of the brain. It, in this narrative review, we assemble evidence for the role of many currently utilized recovery strategies that may have may have on the brain as well as potential mechanisms for their action. The review, uh, provides discussion of how common nutritional strategies as well as physical modalities and methods to reduce mental fatigue are likely to interact with uh, the brain and offer opportunities for subsequent improved performance. We aim to highlight the fact that many recovery strategies have been designed with the periphery in mind, which obviously we're talking about the physical, you know, the muscles, damage, etc., inflammation, immune system, uh, and that refrain, refinement of current methods are likely to provide improvements in mix minimizing brain fatigue whilst we offer a number of recommendations it is evident that many opportunities for improving the research and practical guidelines in this area there are however many opportunities so you know i'm not going to dive too deep into this because essentially what they looked at they looked at nutritional age aids carbohydrates i looked at protein intake they looked at uh, hydration temperature regulation cooling the body inflammatory regulation and how that impacts the brain sleep uh, big one, sleep is huge. Um, and then recovery from mental fatigue and kind of talking through that. Essentially, you know, they really devise this kind of, you know, uh, complex and somewhat like disorganized looking schematic on uh, central fatigue being the focus and the impact on some key things and, and how you can, you know, alter them or change them. So high adenosine levels, this is our neurotransmitter which causes tiredness and sleep or fatigue um dopamine and precursors to that serotonin and precursors to that and why branch chain amino acids or protein intake may be important um and essentially what stimulates being the arrows and what inhibits being the um straight line through fatigue so obviously they looked at all these there wasn't any like real you know um absolute um recommendations in terms of you know like novel or new therapies etc it was all just the kind of you know eat well sleep well do all the right things but essentially what is the main takeaway here 
it's that central fatigue is just as important as peripheral fatigue. And obviously there, there are interactions between both, you know, it's not just like the mind being a separate entity from the body, but we know that the muscular fatigue, the muscle breakdown, the inflammatory reaction, the immune system creates a lot of fatigue overall. That's physical. Mentally, the central nervous system being our main neurotransmitters, noradrenaline or norepinephrine, depending on if you're from Australia or the UK or the United States, noradrenaline, norepinephrine, same thing, right? Dopamine. These two are very highly interrelated. These two are both very important for our perceptions of drive, motivation, seeking future goals, right? So if these are depleted, you may be otherwise unmotivated and lack that um, real get up and go to kind of p p pursue tasks and get things or get your goals. Serotonin, important for well-being, overall feelings of contentment, happiness, or as is a lazy way of explaining it, that serotonin is important for feeling content and being happy in your life, right? Low serotonin doesn't necessarily cause depression. We know that, but um, increasing serotonin can, of course, help at least somewhat in the alleviation of depression. A bit out of the scope, but serotonin is important here. Um, so we've got norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin being our main neurotransmitters, which are important for our perceptions of fatigue. Obviously, a lot, a lot, a lot of other things come into play, but these are our main three in terms of how well we feel within ourselves, how much we are motivated and driven. So obviously, these get depleted. They get elevated. They get depleted. Not only do the actual neurotransmitters themselves deplete after something like, you know, for example, dopamine may be very high during or at least in the acute post phase, particularly if you've done well after the event, the next day it may be really lower. And particularly once you've had high levels of dopamine, the actual receptors can downregulate as well. Um, so these things can take time to recover and get back to a baseline. So, you know, you may do the race, you may be on a high initially, and you, you obviously you're physically tired and fatigued, but mentally you're like, yeah, that was great. In the days after, in the weeks after, you, you know, it's this kind of post-race blues. You, and, and this is really explained by that mental fatigue and that depletion of neurotransmitters, which otherwise spike after, after the race or before the race, whatever, and then really de decline in the subsequent days or weeks after or subsequent days after before you kind of return to a baseline. This is really important. It's something that's not often discussed. Obviously there's opportunities for uh, supplemental or, you know, supplements here to as precursors for neurotransmitters, but generally the emphasis needs to be on mental recovery, sleep, um, all this kind of stuff, um, minimizing exposure to high dopamine, reward pathways so reducing you know stimulatory or simulatory stimulatory more so um you know things like that otherwise provoke high levels of dopamine and really just accepting that this mental fatigue is part and part of the parcel and that you do need to allow recovery in terms of the central nervous system allowing it time to reset so there's two things and obviously both of these pathways peripheral and central are going to vary between people. Some people may recover very quickly physically and therefore the soreness, the inflammation subsides, but mentally be very fatigued. Other people may be the opposite. Some people may suffer real high levels of both. Both are so important to account for in terms of recovering from acute, really traumatic activity, which you're doing for, during an Ironman and allowing the body enough time from a central nervous system for those neurotransmitters and receptors to really return to baseline before you you are then at a similar state whereby you can you know pursue future goals but allowing yourself time to get back there and not you know push it with like taking more coffee or just like stimulating the body when you're otherwise in that depleted state and the other part of it which is much well more known is the obviously the physical recovery what's the key takeaway i think ultimately you know we can take many weeks this is this study is well both studies well more so the first one suggesting up to three weeks, but we didn't really go any longer than that. And even at almost three weeks, we were still in a compromised state in terms of systemic inflammation. So everyone's individual, but, and not only is physical recovery important, but mental and one's perception won't always tell them how recovered they are. And so I think that ultimately you really need to just accept the fact that 
you probably don't want to be positioning races too soon after themselves, particularly if it's like after an Ironman. Maybe a 70.3 you can get away with because it's half the time or less than half the time of actual acute damage. But re realize that any big event that you're training up for and have that you know excitement levels building and then you do that event and everything's neurotransmitters, but then also like physical information damage is all on a high. It's going to take some time and everyone's going to be different, but you got to figure that out for yourselves. And you just got to be careful with, you know, event planning and realize that, okay, if I do a really hard Ironman event, maybe that will take me three, four, five, maybe even six weeks, maybe even longer, maybe three months to really fully recover. So keep it in mind and just be, I guess, aware of this science and aware of like your body as a individual entity, like what works for you and then plan around that uh, and realize that it may take longer than, than you think. Um, and key message, don't rush into high intensity quality training too soon after a big event like this, because ultimately it's going to be, you know, it's going to kind of be pointless in a sense, and you can almost just do more damage than you otherwise need to, to your body. So let me know what you guys think. Hopefully that was an inter interesting discussion and leave a comment. Let me know, you know, how, what's your, been your subjective experience or, um, of recovering from an Ironman, how long has it taken? Has it taken longer than you thought? Have you tried to get back into it too soon? And then, you know, just kind of delayed that process. Hope everyone's keeping well. Good luck to everyone competing at the 70.3 World Championships this weekend. And I will wrap up the video there. Thanks.